What's up, baseball players, parents, coaches? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about should you track bullpens for pitchers? All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. Be sure to check out the links in the description below for my two pitching books, my online courses, links to other videos, et cetera, et cetera. So today, let's talk about should you track bullpens? So here's the thing the analytics world is getting huge. There's apps for this, there's software for that. There's, you know, we can track everything now. Um, but the question is, should you track a lot of this stuff? And at the amateur, especially the youth level, the answer in a lot of cases is no, just because you can track something just because some dad in some other state with a software background made a cool app that could like do a thing that he had to do with pen and paper doesn't mean you should actually use it. Just because some other coach is using a thing doesn't mean you should actually do that thing. So let's go over tracking bullpen. So I know charting stuff is big in lots of other places. You know, as a starting pitcher in pro ball, I had to sit there with a with a game chart and, and chart my other pitchers from the stands. Uh, I do that one day a week. Here's the here's my first thing. I'm going to go through six points about this and why I don't think you should be tracking bullpens in most cases, especially for young pitchers. Number one, you have to ask yourself, are you really going to use all this data? The answer in most cases is no. How often are your players going to sit down and sift through 10 bullpens worth of data and say, oh, yeah, I threw 62% strikes on that Thursday. And then, you know, in June, I threw 65% strikes and oh, my change of, are you actually going to use the data? Really ask yourself that question. In most cases, the answer is going to be no. I owned a baseball academy for a bunch of years and we had lots and lots of bullpens churning through. And in most cases, the couple of times that we did do some charting and did do some radar stuff, it, the data didn't end up being that relevant and players weren't coming in to sit down and do it. And I wasn't really concerned about whether they, they threw 58% strikes last week and 61% strikes this week. With young players, there's a lot of ups and downs. So a lot of times these trends are not super important. Number two, let's go to percentages. So what are the things you're gonna track, right? Percentages of strikes, uh, percentages of hitting your spot maybe, um, tracking percentages for different pitches. But here's the thing, are those questions, are those percentages gonna be relevant, especially given a certain bullpen length? Most bullpens are 25 to 45 pitches long. You don't really throw bullpens much longer than that unless you're a starter and you're getting right, you know, getting close to the season, you're trying to get your pitch count up. But during the season and most times in the off season, bullpens are 25 to 45 pitches long. In most cases, if you're throwing more than that, you're pretty much doing it wrong. So for 25 to 45 pitches, let's say it's 30 is the average. If you're, char if you're charting strike percentage, for example, on a 30 pitch bullpen, one pitch is 3.3%. So if you have a kid that throws 70% strikes today, like good job, Johnny, you threw 21 strikes out of 30 pitches. The next time he throws only 20 strikes, now he's at 67%. The next time he throws, you know, 15 strikes, that's not a lot of strikes. It's a pretty small sample size. So you're asking yourself, okay, he throws three less strikes today. That's 10% fewer strikes. Is that really meaningful? Is that really, that trend over time, is that really important? In most cases, that answer is going to be no. You know, if you're charting starting pitchers, for example, and they throw 100 pitches over 20 starts in a summer, that's a lot of pitches. That's 2,000 pitches. That's a much bigger sample size to say, okay, he throws 67% strikes in year A. Next year, he throws 62% strikes. Something changed, right? That makes a little more sense. But when we're doing 30 pitches at a time, I'm not sure that's going to make a whole lot of difference, especially in the off season, right? You have five, eight, 10, 12 bullpens getting ready to the season, 12, 30 pitches each. Are you going to get useful data out of that, especially when you break up into 10 curveballs, 10 fastballs, 10 changeups? You know, now every fastball he throws at a 10 is 10%. I don't think that's going to be very useful data. So that's something to consider. Number three, I was very against string lines in college. I used to argue with my head coach about it. He wanted to have string lines in the bullpen. I said, why do we have string lines when I'm trying to hit the mitt? And he says, well, you know, we want to make sure it's in the string lines. I'm like, I don't care if it's in the string lines. I'm trying to hit the mitt and the mitt's in the string lines. So why does it matter if I miss the mitt and it's still within the string lines? I'm mad because I missed the mitt and that's my target. If that's your target, that's your target, right? Like who cares if you miss your target, but keep it in the string lines. Now I get that if you're always in the string lines from like the uh, top of the knee below the knee, then, oh, you're doing a good job, but you're not doing a good job if you're missing your spot. And that should be the standard that you're held to. So the thing, my, one of my core issues with tracking bullpens is I was trying to teach my pitchers that the mitt is the goal, 
not the strike zone. The strike zone is not the goal. So we don't really care if you threw 70% strikes in your bullpen because bullpens are supposed to be harder than games. Bullpens are supposed to be teaching you to be focused, to be locked into the mitt, to accept that as your target. And how narrowly are you missing? We don't care if you missed over across the plate into the strike zone. We care, did you hit the mitt or were very close to it? So if that's your goal, you could chart how many times you hit the mitt, but that's going to be a pretty low percentage. It's going to be like 25% if that. And then the other question is, are we teaching the wrong thing? Is, is 70% bullpen uh, strikes in bullpens a good thing? Is, you know, 60% curveballs for strikes in bullpens good? I mean, again, it really comes down to the mitt. And if you're trying to train pitchers to be better pitchers, the thing they need to be trained on is the mitt, not the strike zone. So you don't throw balls to the strike zone. You throw balls to the mitt. So again, it, it, this is what, are we reinforcing the right thing by just tracking percentages and you go back and look, oh, you threw, you know, 58% strikes, a couple months later, you threw 64% strikes, good job. But were they quality strikes? Were you just missing over the middle of the plate more? Or are you just throwing it down the middle more? Is that really relevant information? That's another good question. All right, my next big thing about uh, tracking bullpens is you're going to be attacking problem locations more than you otherwise would. So in a bullpen, your job is not just to see how many strikes you can throw. That's not the goal of a bullpen. The goal of a bullpen is to hit the mitt, to move the mitt around, and to work on hitting different spots that you'd pitch to in a game. So, you know, if you watch my other videos and I can link below, you know, in a game, you might pitch to the middle, to the either half, to either third, or to either corner. You might elevate and bounce a ball. Those are the main sort of core spots you throw to. In a bullpen, you don't really go to the halves. You only really pitch down the middle if it's like the first pitch of the day or like you're throwing curveballs or change ups down the middle. Um, but you don't really throw fastballs down the middle or aim there in a bullpen. Um, you really hold yourself to a much higher standard in a bullpen. So you're always pitching to maybe the thirds of the plate or the black of the plate in a bullpen. Um, you basically are just taking everything down a notch or up a notch, whatever way you want to call it, like in difficulty saying that this is the standard we're trying to build. I want to be able to throw my change up on the outer third. I want to be able to throw my curveball below the kneecap on the corner of the plate. Those are the pitches you're trying to make in a game that are hard to make. So we're going to practice them in a bullpen. So now if I'm doing that, my strike percentage is naturally going to be a lot lower in a bullpen. If I'm doing really hard stuff in a bullpen, you know, what's the standard for it? Is it 70% strikes doing, making pitches that I'm not good at making? No, it's going to be like, I probably execute 40% of the time in a bullpen uh, because I'm again, throwing to the thirds and the black a lot more than I would and holding myself to a high standard and, you know, trying to hit the mitt. So this again, goes back to the core thing is, are we trying just to track strikes or are we trying to get better at making quality pitches in the bullpen? And I don't think it's the former. I think it's the latter. So number five, and this goes back to the previous one, the better you get at stuff, the more you need to challenge yourself. So essentially your strike percentage should never rise over time. It should either stay flat or it should decrease over time because you're going to increase difficulty over time. So if you ask a kid to hit the mitt on the outer half, you know, early, and he starts getting pretty good at hitting on the outer half, what are you going to do in his bullpens in subsequent weeks? You're going to push that mitt to the outer third. And now he gets pretty good hitting the outer third. What's going to happen next? You're going to push him to the outer corner. And now guess what? He's got very little margin for error. And so he's missing off the plate more. And his strike percentage actually goes down in his subsequent weeks because we're asking him to do a more challenging task. So then if you're, char if you're charting strike percentages, what does that tell you? Your kid got worse over the year, over the, the you know weeks and months. He now throws 50% 50 strikes versus 65% in the earlier weeks. No, he's just now, you know, challenging himself more and giving himself less margin for error, which is going to be better for him in games because now he can make those pitches in a game and there's going to be a lot more times where it's easy to catch up in the count. So again, if this is the trend in bullpens, which it should be, that you're continuing to get better and do the hard things, then tracking those baseline strike percentages, stuff like that, are not going to be that relevant, I don't think, over time. And it's, gonna, it's almost going to become confusing as to whether kids are making progress, where if you just say, hey, we're, gonna, we're not tracking anything, we're just going to focus on hitting the mitt. Just hit the mitt, hit the mitt, hit the mitt. If you hit the mitt, great. Next pitch, hit it again. You miss it, okay. Next pitch try to hit it now. And that's how pitching is. Pitching is one pitch at a time. And it's always that reset. It doesn't matter what just happened. It's right now. Let's hit the mitt and then we'll go from there. And that's the mindset you're really, you're really trying to breed. You don't want to breed this mindset of, I hope my 30 pitches today are good collectively. I hope I throw 70% strikes today. That's not really the mindset that you want. Your mindset is, 
I want to make one excellent quality pitch. I want to execute my pitch right now this one time. That's the mindset that you that you have as a pitcher. And then if you do that over and over, then you pitched a really good game when you look back on it. But you don't want to have that mindset of, I want to throw 65% strikes today. I want to throw 10 great curveballs today. Your job is always one good pitch. Let's execute it right now. My last thing with bullpens is the, you know, the bread and butter sort of analytics. Velocity, spin rate. Do you really need to be tracking those, especially for amateur players? And my answer is no. Number one, velocity is not super important in bullpens. Bullpens are to get you prepared to pitch well in a game. If you want to track velocity and spin rate, do it in a game. Why? Because they're going to be throwing full speed and they're going to be throwing with full spin, which that's also something to, to note here. If you're throwing 80% effort in the bullpen, your spin rate does not matter one bit because it's not going to be game spin. So if you throw a, a 3000 RPM curveball in a game, which is outstanding, like major league standards outstanding, now you're throwing in the bullpen, you're throwing 80%. What is your spin rate going to be? 2,700, 2,600, 2,500? Who even cares? Because it's not game speed. So what, what, what are we comparing it to? Your spin is very tied to your effort level. So when you're not, you know, going full bore and whipping it, the ball is not going to spin nearly as, nearly as fast. So tracking spin rate in sub-maximal bullpens doesn't make sense. And in my book, unless you're getting ready to just go right into the season, you're not going to be throwing full speed in a bullpen. And even if you're trying to throw full speed, your full speed is slower than game speed. So then it's like, okay, well, I throw 2,100 RPM, you know, this pitch in a bullpen before the season. Well, and you know, I'm throwing 83 miles per hour. But then as soon as I go into a game on March 1st, I'm throwing 86. Was that spin relevant at all? So now when we go back and look at the winner's work, does it, did it matter what a spin rate of a 83 mile per hour uh, slider was? Probably not. The other thing is with youth players, spin rate absolutely does not matter. It's not a, it's not a useful tracking tool. Oh, you can say, oh, well, I want it to go up over time. Okay, why don't you just play catch with that kid or watch from behind the catcher and see how sharply it breaks. The spin rate metrics, like who are you comparing them to? I think this is a trend that's getting out of control. It's not really relevant until these kids are, are of legitimate recruiting age. Um, because what are you going to do? Okay, little Johnny's slider has a spin rate of 1,200. He's 13. What do you do with that number? Hey, let's try to make it better. Okay, well, this, that's this goal every time you touch a ball and throw a slider, isn't it? I mean, we, I, I've heard this old saying that if it can be tracked, you should track it. Or if, you, if you're not tracking it, then you're just guessing as you, you're, whether you're getting better. That's not true. Kid, I mean, pitchers were getting better for hundreds of years playing baseball by playing catch with each other by getting feedback you throw with me i say hey that slider was that slider was pretty good or hey that one you kind of got on the side of it you know this one was better than that one that kind of feedback is still feedback it's still valuable and when kids are younger they just need feedback about this curveball was sharper than that curveball that change up was better than that change up this one you slowed your arm down that one was kind of soft and rolly this one was pretty sharp that one was better than this one and they just try to repeat that feel and do it the way they did it well again and then you keep doing that and they get better over time the fact that you say hey that one was 1200 rpms the, oh that one was 1100 rpms right go down there and look and watch play catch with them be behind the catcher visualize it tell them hey that one had more break this way more break that way you can use some of these tools to help visualize it i know rapsodo gives cool readouts of what it looks like but I still think behind the catcher and giving actual real world feedback about this one did this versus that is still much more useful for your amateur players than just giving them some number that's really not comparable to anything else that's probably not that relevant um, at a young age. So I wouldn't really worry about tracking velocity in bullpens and I wouldn't worry about tracking uh, spin rate in bullpens. I think those are just useless until you're much, much older. And, um, and then you're really at that tinkering phase when you're older, if you're tinkering, if you're a college, you know, junior and your slider kind of sucks and your and your slider is 1800 RPMs and you're trying to get it higher. Okay. That's a good point where we're trying to look, we're fighting for a little percentage point. Um, your every little percentage point better is going to make you a little better on the mound. But when you're younger, like most of your sliders suck. So you just need to get better at throwing sliders. You just need to throw more sliders. You don't really need to track every one of you know, 500 crappy sliders that you're going to throw as a 13 year old, because they're all going to suck. So like, why do we really need to track that anyway? So do you agree? Do you not agree? 
Um, leave a comment below. Obviously, analytics is a um, it's a fun new tool. It can be some there's some really great uses for it. There's also some times where it's overused. I mean, this has got to be expected, right? Any new technology can be detrimental. It can be super helpful. And I think about finding the balance is what everyone wants to do. But again, you don't want to be tracking stuff that isn't useful. And at most of the amateur levels and youth levels, a lot of this stuff is not going to be that useful. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Dan Blewett, and I'll see you here in the next video.